Enstra still has to face new charges for stealing from a landscaping company in New Jersey. In 2006, the case goes to trial. How do you explain the discrepancy? Uh, all I know is that I didn't take anything that wasn't mine. Counts were coming in. Every day during the trial, Zanstra has lunch with his attorney. Uh, I know nothing about that. On the day the verdict is due, he makes different plans. Your Honor, I know that I've had a troubled past, but I am a changed man now. He said to me on that particular day, he said, no, I'm going to go by myself. I'm going to have lunch by myself. When I arrived back in the courtroom, he wasn't there. And the judge immediately said, well, where's your client? He should have been back at 2 o'clock. He's not here. Is there a problem? My client seems to have uh, uh, been delayed, Your Honor. I did not suspect at all that he was going to flee. Zenstra's attorney frantically calls his client. Let me reach out to him and, and I'll try to find him. Randall Zenstra has disappeared once again. Your criminal Randall Zenstra has been in and out of the hands of the law for over 18 years. Now on trial for fraud in New Jersey, he once again slips away. 25-year-old New Jersey native Randall Zanstra is waiting for his estranged wife in her new apartment. What are you doing with my wife? Why are you doing this? Son of a bitch! Zanstra married Linda Johnson four years earlier. She just filed for divorce. The boyfriend flees the apartment. Get out of here! No, no, man, I'm sorry. No, no, please don't. You think you no, messed around with my wife? No. Point blank rape. He got shot and that's kind of what happened. The guy was on the ground and Zanstra's ex-wife grabbed a shotgun that she had in the vehicle. Randall! And she started shooting at Randy. Zanstra is hit. Zanstra flees to Georgia. He needs to come up with a new plan fast. I had seen some things from a Simon and Simon show when I was a kid about how a man got new identity. And I thought, wow, all right, that's the thing to do. And I wasn't sure there was any warrants out for me or anything like that. I was just scared. And so I went to the local library and I looked up some past records of different people. He then obtains a birth certificate of a deceased man. I'd like to get my driver's license. Okay. And then actually went right down to the local DMV and got ID. Hey, smile. Okay, there you go, Mr. Johnson. Oh, thank you very much. You know, I've always wanted to live in Georgia. Well, welcome to the beach state, sir. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Have a good day. Rendell Zanstra has a completely different identity. He's now Barry Johnson. His life as a fugitive has begun. Zanstra decides to stay in Georgia and starts to settle in. Two full years pass. It's now 1990. Zanstra's wife grows increasingly suspicious about her husband's past. Ben? What's wrong? Ever seen this before? What do you mean? Who's, who's Randall? Is that your real name, uh, Randall? It, it, yeah, but it was a long From time. From your loving wife, Linda. <sighs> When Zanstra returns home from work one day, he sees a police car in front of his house. All of a sudden, you're in a situation where you might go to prison. The fear of prison, believe it or not, is great, even in those who live a whatever bad lifestyle they want to live. Deborah's family has correct. turned him in. Police are waiting at his house. They've come to question Zanstra face to face, but he has other plans. just outside of Atlanta, Georgia. Wanted for attempted murder, Randall Zenstra has been on the run from the law for over two years. He returns home one day to find police waiting at his door. I came toward my home and saw police cars. I'm always worried about police cars, all the time. Zenstra pulls his hat down low and drives right by the policeman. He immediately heads out of town and leaves his life in Atlanta behind him. That's it. I ended up 
leaving that car, getting on a bus, and uh, going to Las Vegas. And I had a different identification. Hi, can I help you? Hi. Uh, I'd like to get my driver's license. Just need you to step over here for a picture. Sure. Once again, Zanstra pays a visit to the local DMV. He's now Sean Jacobs. Okay, Dan. In his spare time, he turns to gambling, using his skill as a poker player to make extra cash. I'm extremely good at gambling. Not, not bad, believe it or not. Poker is a way that I had made a living for some time. In the 90s, I was as good as many of the strong professionals you see now. He hones his skills in underground games and starts making friends. He also starts earning more and more money. Well, you read the books and you study like everyone, but I've always been good at games. I was a chess master when I was young and thought perhaps I'd become a professional. To make big money, Zenstra adds a new element to his game, cheating. He recruits a team of associates, all with a single goal in mind, fleecing the Vegas casinos one by one. There's a ways of cheating casinos at their own game in a way of altering the odds in your favor and they don't like it and you can work with teams of people doing it. I was living in a casino then, uh, inside one. I think you're looking for someone, Randall Zanstra. That evening, Zanstra notices something odd. And five minutes later, a security guard was at my door saying, hello. Get out! Get on the ground! Down! Don't After more than six years on the run, Randall Zanstra is finally in custody. I'd like to get my driver's license. Zanstra immediately runs to his home state of New Jersey and once again assumes another identity. He is now Peter Dowd. And once again, he meets a woman. So pretty. This is the best place to go. Zanstra marries for the third time, but in a matter of months, the relationship starts to sour. Zanstra and his New Jersey wife are staying in a casino in Atlantic City. They are still having issues. One night, she calls the cops. Zanstra is in his room when there's a knock at the door. Hello? Police department, open the door. Ah, uh, I'm sorry, I can't do that, officer. Sir, I need you to open the door. No, I'm sorry, I, I can't. I have my lawyer waiting for me not. The police are just inches away. Randall Zenstra has been a fugitive for over six years. He's jumped Yo! bail on charges for the 1988 attempted murder of his ex-wife's boyfriend. He's made a habit of slipping in and out of the hands of the law. What's this? <laughs> Fine, be back. Incredibly, Randy's plan works. The police leave. I'd like to get my driver's license. Oh, okay, great. We're just gonna take a picture right over here. All right. Zanstra once again establishes a new identity. He is now Kenneth Holt. Okay, and there you go, Mr. Holt. Oh, thank you. You know, I've always wanted to live in New Jersey. Well, welcome to the Garden State. <laughs> thank you. Have a good day. You too. He continues doing what he does best, landscaping jobs and gambling. Let it, let it ride again. Okay, yeah. In 1996, he flies back to Vegas to try his luck at gambling's ultimate prize, the World Series of Poker. I competed in a tournament when I was playing in Vegas and some people saw that I was quite good. A man with a lot of money said, I think you're probably a potentially great player, I'll put you in and I want a percentage of what you win if you win. Zanstra brazenly plays the tournament under his real name. The wanted fugitive advances to the final round. I'm good at any type of board or tabletop games and in particular poker you have to be good at reading people. When it's all said and done, Zanstra takes ninth place and over $15,000 in cash. 
Zanstra is in the New York area once again, working in landscaping. Then, he moves on to a different scam. Zanstra and some associates rent out a rundown building on 38th Street and set up a business called High Market Vending. Parks for Money Now, how are you doing today? Time to tell you how much money you can make in just a few weeks? It was all scam. Zanstra and his team swindle senior citizens across the country, netting $276,000. Now, this is Randy this is Crystal Vending. Well, this is George Collins. Do you remember me? Investigators are alerted to Zanstra's elaborate mail fraud. But the group of con men know the jig is up. They clear out the entire building and get out of town. Zanstra flees to Atlantic City to do what he knows best, gamble. The federal government had been looking for me for a little while. I was not aware of that. Uh, there have been warrants issued for all the people at the vending company. It takes postal inspectors only a few days to track Zanstra down. In 2001, fugitive Randall Zanstra has been on the lam for over 12 years. Now, postal inspectors have him cornered in an Atlantic City hotel room. The inspectors take Zanstra back to New York City. He must now face federal fraud charges. Mr. Zanstra, the court has found you guilty as charged. I'm setting bail at $6,000. I want you to return to this court for sentencing on the 20th of April. At the uh, federal trial, I was found guilty and then allowed to stay out until sentencing. Do you understand me? Yes, Your Honor. I do believe it's time for me to pay my debt to society. Zanstra takes advantage of his luck and disappears again. The marshals don't know that some of what they're hearing is true. Zanstra spends nearly two years living in Mexico, making a living playing online poker. Oh, yes. oh Mexico is great. It's free, it's nice, it's not a problem. Other than the language barrier, which I began to learn. Back in New York. Thank you. Next, please. Hi. May I help you? Yes, I'd like to get my driver's license. Do you mind stepping over here, please? Not at all. In 2002, Zanstra returns to the States after meeting a woman online. He is now Sean Waxana. Right, here you go, Mr. H Waxana. The so, love of a woman is always going to get me. What else are you lying to But for the fourth time, the relationship quickly deteriorates. I mean, really. I mean, you could, you could go find a much better job. Oh my God, I have had it. You need to go. You know exactly what? where you are. You are a huge loser. You are such a huge loser. Don't you ever call me that. <laughs> He wants the deed to her house, but the pressure of living on the run is starting to take its toll. Sign it! No! Sign that! No! Sign it! No. Sign it right now! No. According to Zanstra's girlfriend, he puts a gun to her head. Oh, I'll stop when you sign! Sign it! He forces her to sign over her house to him. January 2004, Loveland, Colorado. It's been nearly 16 years since Randall Zanstra went on the lam. Randall Zanstra. He's in Loveland, Colorado. Zanstra leaves his house one day and gets the surprise of his life. No, 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 no. Turn around, don't do this. Da, 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 da. Yes, sir. I didn't say anything. Thought I was going to get killed or something. Finally, Zanstra is locked up. He does seven months for the mail fraud conviction. The attempted murder conviction in Texas is reversed on appeal. With his varied and often glamorous criminal history, Zanstra's story becomes a media sensation. Dawn, April 19th, 2007. The U.S. Marshals Service has surrounded the house of Randall Zanstra. They wait for their fugitive to emerge. After nearly 20 years of theft and violence, Randall Zanstra finally faces justice. A judge in New Jersey hands down a nine-year sentence for theft. Zanstra is now an inmate at the Southwood State Prison in Bridgeton, New Jersey.